1. Coming up on episode 179, Epic is launching a publishing division, a surprise Nintendo Direct Mini, a tabletop RPG humble bundle, and much, much more on the 8-Bit Adventures podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the 8-Bit Adventures podcast, bringing you the latest and greatest geeky news of the week. I am your host, Sean Hayes, and with me are my wonderful co-hosts, as always, Courtney Bolin. Hey, everybody! And uh, Mad Coffee Alchemist himself, Josh York. <laughs> yeah, fight me about my coffee. Let's go. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want to fight you, I just want to know. Like, so, so, so what is, what is the ratio of this? <laughs> ratio of what? So here's How the thing. Much... Uh, yeah. So for for context for the ask, audience, ask me anything. <laughs> is um, Josh shared a video on on Facebook earlier today where uh, he proceeded to uh, basically drop a Cadbury egg into <laughs> a a coffee mixture, blend that up in a magic bullet, and had some sort of decadent coffee. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> However, it's beautiful. Decadent, decadent's my, a good word. My, my question is not the Cadbury egg because you yeah. know, okay, I can see that. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, yeah. My, my question is the the butter. butter. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I've heard of butter. How much do yep. you put on? A uh, tablespoon. Ooh, that's a lot. Mm. I don't know. Like, <laughs> off, like if you have a normal <laughs> stick of butter. Yeah. Like a little, I don't know, a wedge off the end. Not a lot. Okay. I'm like, because a tablespoon is is one eighth of that stick, where the sticks on the they no, have definitely the bars. not an eighth of that. No okay, way. I'm like, yeah, no, because that's a tablespoon. <laughs> no, I eyeball. Okay. I'm like, what if I had a? And I don't know what an actual tablespoon size is. I just estimate that's by the that. size of a spoon I use for everything. Like this is the suit. I assume this is a tablespoon. I use this to eat things off on a bowl onto my table. This is a <laughs> tablespoon, <laughs> like a normal soup spoon. So I'm like, oh, would that much butter fit in a spoon? Yes. Okay. I'm like a normal spoon. <laughs> so why the butter? Uh, it's a keto thing mostly. Um, okay. and it's I don't use regular butter. It's just it's grass fed. It's specific butter uh, as well. I've just been doing it for a while. It's fine. It doesn't. I don't know. Some people think it's weird. Uh, definitely. I'm just wondering, does it not... alter the taste of the coffee? Probably. I'm no connoisseur to to really. Okay. know the difference because so here's my normal coffee without a Cadbury egg in it <laughs> uh, just uh just a K cup of like Folgers yep. black silk coffee mm -hmm. and that's it just a normal whatever mug yeah. full and then usually seven drops of stevia for sweetener because I don't use sugar oh, okay okay you add you add stuff to your dark to your hot coffee okay. yeah I don't I don't like black coffee okay. um so yeah, I, for sweetener, I try to avoid sugar because uh, sugar is evil and uh, bad for you. And so uh, I use stevia as an alternative, and seven drops of that, and a little like a little slice of uh, end of a stick of butter, not a ton, mm -hmm. and put that on the magic bullet, and that's it. And it's good. The butter like makes the froth uh, uh, froth on the top, and uh, it's good. It tastes good. Now the other day. The only reason I like Easter is because of Cadbury eggs. Yeah. Uh, so I buy Cadbury eggs whenever I can at Easter. And now I'm being hypocritical about my sugar, but, you know, I can't resist Cadbury eggs. They're just too good. Uh, so yeah, like, the, peeps, the peeps are closed I, down. Ugh, I hate peeps. They're disgusting. They're disgusting, terrible candy that should be erased from existence. You probably <laughs> feel the same way about candy corn, don't you? Candy corn's fine. Candy corn is acceptable. Uh, peeps, I don't like marshmallow that much. That's why. Oh, okay. uh, so, yeah, I was like, I'll, I wonder if what would happen if I put a Cadbury in my coffee? Because I've heard about people who make the keto coffee like I do and adding um, chocolate chips to give it like yep. a mocha type feel. Yeah, yeah. I've I've even done it with um, when the uh, M&M's, the chocolate raspberry M&M's. 
Like I've done that with my coffee, with my right. hot coffee. I added a couple in the bottom, stirred it all up. Yeah, and I've got the magic bullet, so it makes it super, super yeah. easy, like five seconds. So uh, the first time I did it, I'm like, I'll do half a Cadbury because they're pretty big, like ratio size to the cup of coffee. I'm like, that feels like a lot of stuff to put in. It's like, I'll do half a Cadbury egg. So I did that the other day, and it's like, I didn't taste it that much. So the next day, I was like, I'm going to do the whole thing. And I was like, oh, okay, now I, it does taste like a Cadbury cream egg coffee. It's really good. So I figured people probably would think this is really weird. Uh, so I'm going to make a video of it and share so people can see, <laughs> no, see how odd girl, it but is. But you notice, none of my I, questions are It'll probably get a judging. few laughs and why not? See, none of my questions are judging. My questions are, why the butter? I completely yeah, understand people, the Cadbury egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then, yeah. And then a lot just, of people who don't like do the keto happy. thing or aren't privy to it are like butter. What the hell are you doing? I'd heard of butter. I'd it's the same thing. It's, it, you're esen it's essentially just I don't know. Butter's like hardened, thick, like whole cream, right? Kind of. I mean, it's a dairy. It's essentially all the same stuff. It all comes from the same place. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the same as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Food, food science would disagree, but you do you. <laughs> so it was we all good. know we know how, how little I care for the details of science, as long yeah. as it makes some type of logical sense in my head. I don't care about the. I mean, reality you can rationalize anything. But... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it was good. It was kind of. It was great. It, was it looked very frothy? Was it very creamy? Uh. Because of the the cream inside the egg. I mean, it's hard to tell because the butter makes it a little thicker anyway. Oh, okay. Um, like it gives it, the butter gives it a bit of a different consistency than, that's the, it is the difference. That gives a bit of a different consistency, not a ton. You're like, you're not drinking a milkshake, obviously. Yeah. But you can tell the difference between just adding like half and half or whatever people use, or even mm -hmm. whole cream to using a little bit of butter. Okay. Gives it a bit of a richer flavor, I think. And, oh. Good to consistency know. and i don't know it's also weird too because stevia is although it gives it a sweetness it gives it a different sweetness than legit sugar does for sure not bad just different i drink my hot coffee black so yeah i like flavored coffees because of that though i actually don't like coffee that much honestly it's kind of more of a habit than a thing i enjoy oh no <laughs> yeah i'm coffee. not really a, Exactly. That's coffee why, I, like, when you ask me all these questions, I don't know. The mo the main reason I started drinking coffee was, um, consistently, was um, when I started like taking measures to change my diet and do things along that, and and like do I do intermittent fasting, so I only really eat eat like during certain hours of the day between like yeah. maybe ten in the morning and four in the afternoons, like the only time I eat eat most of the time. Yeah. So I like. When I was getting up really, really early and doing papers, oh yeah, like it—that's a long time between like being awake and eating. So I yeah. would drink coffee as like something that wasn't too crazy, uh, and yeah, it's not totally it's not too... my metabolism. Yeah, and it's not too crazy on the calorie count at the beginning of the day. Especially and it's like again, adding... I, part of the part of the butter is like getting certain fats that you want when you're doing the yep. ketogenic thing because you want uh, a really high. Uh, fat ratio in yeah. your intake so that's part of the butter cool. and now it's just that's just what i do now with my coffee instead of cream or sugar or cream or milk or go. whatever cool so yeah now you know my uh, coffee habits and now easter time i'll add cadbury eggs <laughs> and now at easter time you'll Not just every throw day, it out be, the window crazy. and add a add a cadbury egg to it yeah why not God, that's such an American thing. <laughs> it was good. It tasted chocolatey. No, it tasted I'm just no, like it, a Cadbury egg. It was good. It looks like I need you to make me one. <laughs> like, Super easy. Like, just just like, leave it on the porch. I'll come and get it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Sorry. yeah, apologies for the, you know, what, 10 minute... <laughs> tangent on food we haven't done so i mean megan and i haven't done berkshire bites yeah there we go so like there's your berkshire there, there's minute. some food talk needed to happen that's related yeah. to eight bit adventures somehow i made barbecue pork chops this week i made cadbury egg coffee i'm just uh we we made nachos 
There you go. Yeah. Make? <laughs> Make? We made nachos, yeah. I like the barbecue sauce so much that I use on my pork chops that like any leftover I have in the glass pan that I cook the pork chops in, I'm using Tostitos chips to uh, <laughs> like eat the leftover barbecue sauce so I don't want to waste it, and it's really That's good. Legit. Yeah. Nice. Talk about an American thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, jumping into the news. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the actual from news. That. Uh. Related to uh, coming from the land of barbecue sauce. <laughs> okay. Uh, Epic Games, based in South Carolina. Uh, oh, okay. There we yeah, go. Right? Yeah, right? Fortnite hey. developer uh, <laughs> announcing uh, last week that it is getting into the publishing game. So, like, they have their they have their Epic Games store where uh, they sell games. Um but it looks like uh, they wanted to jump into both the console and, um, like, PC publishing game. Um, mm. So, uh, providing, basically, basically, uh, and providing <laughs> another outlet for indie devs to go to. Um, so, uh, I don't necessarily see this as a bad thing, uh, having more options for indie developers um, to go through a publisher uh, could be, a, you know... More competition is always better. Um, as far as their track record, we'll see. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they've all they've done is self-publish, I believe. Uh, so we'll see how they uh, basically work with smaller dev teams. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't even know what games Epic makes other than Fortnite or made. Unreal um, Turn- okay, they did Unreal Tournament back in the day. Yeah, um, they also they also make Unreal, the Unreal Engine. So right, okay. So I wonder if that's going to be a tie-in. Is like they're going to work with smaller dev teams that are using the Unreal Engine, hmm. or at least prioritize them. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh. But yeah, uh, the article that I read it from uh, was like, oh, oh they're getting into the game and they're... Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Gears of War 1, 2, 3. I don't know about the newer, newer ones. Oh, they didn't make 4 or 5. Okay. Actually, let's see who made Gears 4. Uh, developed by The Coalition and published by Microsoft. Gears that, five. That, that sounds um uh, that sounds uh also but also by nice. the coalition. Yeah. Um also apparently in the news, uh the Gears 5 multiplayer designer uh has left the coalition, citing personal reasons. <laughs> According to PC what Gamer. The, what will the coalition do? I don't know. Who's a coalition of? Is it just like that's just the name of the company or is it an actual that, that, coalition? That's of... the uh the name of the company, yeah. The coalition. Okay. Yeah, that's more that's boring. I thought it was Th- like that a... is yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an actual coalition of yeah. you know yeah, I have no idea. Oh, some type of partnership of developers. Um oh, it sounds like uh basically kind of reevaluating uh, his priorities after his predecessor left the company as well. Predecessor uh, left to work on Diablo. <laughs> uh, which okay. <laughs> one four. Uh, it sounds like four. Yeah, yeah. Because they, uh, Rod Ferguson left in 2019. So, uh, whatever happened to that phone Diablo game? Yeah, you know, uh, nobody's talking about it. Let's see. Because I think it was supposed to be out by now. I wonder if they just changed focus to the Asian market on that and said, let's just cut, cut, yeah. sever everything. Uh, so here we go. According to Tech Radar. The West. Um, let's see. Basically. Blizzard has <laughs> remained largely quiet about Diablo Immortal since its controversial reveal. Mm. Uh, 
there are alpha tests coming. Um, wait, when was this written? Yeah, February 7th, 2020. Um, okay. Yeah, it's still coming soon. Yeah, so uh, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows! Um, Gotta love that. <laughs> there are plans for alpha tests later this year. So, yeah. Okay, then. Um, oh, and yeah, Rod Ferguson to oversee the Diablo franchise. So... Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, so... It, I mean, we all have phones, uh, and apparently... Yeah. We we all use them to make our, make our opinions known, I guess. And uh, Blizzard... Yeah, has just been quiet on, on that front. I don't know if... Yeah, if uh, in the States we'll get any announcements until, like, it's Fine. ready to come out. Who yeah. cares? I was just curious. Um... I I wonder if Blizzard will like quietly release Immortal along like or at least in the West they'll quietly release it uh and focus more on announcements for Diablo 4. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they will try to connect it to Diablo 4 in some way and have nah. a parallel release and have I... it not be so <clears throat> much, maybe maybe refocus on not having it so much be its own game but as it as I don't know, some, I don't know, some add-on or extra with Diablo 4. Um, I don't know. Because, uh, I don't, because I don't think Blizzard was developing it. Because I think Tencent was developing. Oh, that's Immortal. right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I see that happening. <laughs> um, but, uh. Oh, I didn't put this in the show notes, but um, Hearthstone uh, got a massive ladder update, apparently, where oh, really? uh, it used to be used to have numerical ranks, uh, and now they basically, th they've completely thrown that out and moved to... They also got Demon Hunters. They did get Demon Hunters. Uh, and, After um, 10,000 years. They got Demon Hunters before Death Knights, and apparently people are Ooh. upset about it, yeah. Demon yeah. Hunters are cooler, so whatever. Um, and Blizzard's response has been like, well, we had that one expansion where there were Death Knight cards that replace your hero. So there you go. And it's like, <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's, uh. Um, but yeah, so ladder now, uh, basically matches how ladder works in like Heroes of the Storm and Starcraft, where it's like bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, mm -hmm. Grandmaster, all that stuff. Mm. And, uh, Overwatch does the same thing. Most um, most ranked online games do a very similar. Yes, so that. they basically revamped it, um, and uh, they've made a lot of changes to their auto chess, sort of auto chess battler card game mode, as well. I didn't even know they had that. Yeah, uh, I I played it for a little while. Um, it's weird. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I was just like, I'm nah. Um, yeah, it's every round. Um, so you every round you get like an increasing amount of gold to yeah. spend on cards that you add to your deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Or not really your deck. Is but it random like, card? Like you have a random draw of cards to pick from every um, round or something? So there is a... Um, there's uh, three random cards you get to pick from to buy. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. buy one, it gets replaced with another one. Right, um, yes. And you can spend like one mana or something to freeze cards. So that way they stay in for the next round. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, it's not a deck. It's you're, you're basically buying minions uh, mm -hmm. that go directly onto your board. And then they automatically fight the enemy's minions. And if uh, there's any minions left over after one side's been completely eliminated, all that extra damage is dealt to the hero. I see. Yeah. So that's how that works. 
Um, and then it's basically the hero you pick has different synergies with different types of uh, monsters and, and critters and stuff. Yep. Um, so you're trying to figure out like good tribal synergy type stuff. So like Murlocs, yeah. demons, beasts, mechs. Uh, I think now Sounds there's like, dragons and stuff. Sounds like auto chess to me. Basically. Sounds just like all the ones I've seen and played. Yep. Blizzard uh, did not want to get uh, left in the dust again on new and emerging game types. Uh, but they were still a little... They were quicker to the draw than yeah. they were for MOBAs, but yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, new Hearthstone ladder, but, and, and new expansion with Demon Hunters. Um, apparently you get like a base Demon Hunter deck when you get the expansion. So, or, or when you complete a, an adventure or something. But, I don't know. I, know. I, I haven't really played in a while, uh, and I don't know if I, I have any inclination to go back in. So I have no idea. I just, I have too many other things to play right now, so. Uh, and then, mm. I mean, next up in the news, uh, further evidence of too many things to play. Uh, Nintendo had a direct, quote-unquote, mini last week, which is we basically a full... Did this last week? We did not, because it was an, it came out the next day. Oh, we must have talked about the indie one then. Maybe that's what I'm thinking we of. We did. We talked about the indie showcase, and then gotcha. it was like a week later, they just dropped like a full full direct. Oh, okay. yeah, that's that's when I messaged you guys about um, yes. uh, Borderlands uh, and Bioshock. Yeah, so uh, it's yeah. a, I, th- I think it's a Borderlands 1 and 2 collection. Uh, it Probably. is Borderlands. It is so according to the eShop because all of these titles are available for um, pre-order right now. Yeah. It is you can get each of the games. Um, I know for Bioshock you could get each of the games, Bioshock, Bioshock Two, or um, Infinite, or you can get choose to get the collection, which is just all three of them anyway. Um, and I believe I was seeing the same thing for. Um, Borderlands. Okay. Um, come on, come on up. I doubt you're going to be able to get three on the Switch. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we're going to get three. It's probably one, two, and pre sequel would be my guess. Probably. Uh, Borderlands Game of the Year Edition, Borderlands the Handsome, Handsome Collection, yeah. and Borderlands the Legendary Collection. I don't know what that is. Uh, both of them. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then, as I said, each of these, uh, each of the Bioshocks, uh, Bioshock and Bioshock Two are both the remastered, and Bioshock Infinite has the is the complete edition. Um, so, and all of those launch May 29th. Man, yeah, I've um, had all three Bioshocks sitting in my Steam library for a long yeah. time. And I've yeah. Never uh, touched them. Also, XCOM. Yeah, I was just about to get there. Yes, XCOM. First one or the second one or both? Two. Uh, two. Does X- it have the XCOM expansion? Collect- hold on, hold on. I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. Uh, XCOM 2 collection includes the award-winning strategy game XCOM 2, four DLC packs, and the War of the Chosen War of the expansion, Chosen, that's what I was curious about. All okay. in one package. Um, I really wanted to play uh, XCOM, but... I think that game would infuriate me from everything I've ever <laughs> seen about it. The like all the, the all the memes, hit yes, and like yep. point blank misses. I can't, I can't deal with that. Yep. yep, more than a couple times before, I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not putting myself through this. Um, all my Xenoblade finely laid plans. Chronicles. No way. Yeah, Xenoblade yeah. Chronicles. Uh, That's the, the big definitive one. edition is also yep. launching and releasing on May 29th, 2020. So. Yep. Uh, so that one, um, it looks really good. I was worried that like if they were just going to port it, um, and yeah. apparently they did some texture work and some model, a little bit of model work on it, so that the models actually mm-hmm. like they look pretty good now. Uh, yeah. The faces don't look dead. <laughs> oh, nice. They, they don't have dead eyes on them like they did on the Wii. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, and and a lot of um, sort of UI uh, streamlining. Uh, and and touch ups. Um, there was a there's a demo out for Bravely Default two, 
Um, yes, there is. Which is technically the third game in the series, but it's not connected to the first two games. Um, it's weird. Yeah. Uh, um, we did get news. Uh, so the next fighter uh, in Smash Brothers is going to be from ARMS. Oh. So it's yeah. uh, Nintendo's new IP where it's all spring arm people. Yeah. Um, I figured that it was coming at some point. Also- that would explain why there's also an arms demo available on the eShop right now. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was done intentionally. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Um also the Dante. other the other big news, uh Star Wars Episode 1 Racer oh. is launching soon for a Nintendo Switch. Oh, and uh so Jedi Knight Academy, I think. Yes. Is? Yep. That is that is Jedi currently Knight. out. So, Jedi yes, Knight, it is out, and PC players have apparently been slaughtering the console players because it was accidentally cross-platform. Oh, no. Yeah. How do you yeah. accidentally cross-platform? I don't know. I read a couple articles on it, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> every like, article's like, it's a slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> like, that does not seem like it's something that would be... Like, like that's something that would be oh no I mean so I could I wonder if it was a case of you know they wanted uh it to be cross platform on consoles cuz that, that's usually what you see is like you can do cross platform you know yeah. with consoles and then PC but like those ecosystems remain separate and somehow something got messed up and yeah, Somebody now it's all. Got the wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. I will say this though. Um, that game does require include online features that require online membership. What does? Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. Uh, yeah, so it's, when when you say, do you mean the, do you mean the Nintendo Switch online membership or does it have its own yeah. separate one? Because that is something that needs to be specified. I was just about to reread that. It okay. includes online features that require a Nintendo Switch online membership and a Nintendo account. Okay. So, yes. I just I say that because uh, I've seen plenty of games uh, mm-hmm. that, you know, uh, that you have to pay for the online, but then they also have their own subscription. Yes. No, that's why I... Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> that is why I yes. did that. Yeah, um, there was some... I had some weird issues with that when I was playing it last year. Yeah. So I originally, I think, bought it on Steam. And yeah. then when I, and that, I was playing it when I was living in Korea and I did it on Steam. Mm-hmm. And then when I came home and played it last year, or like a four year difference, um, like I wanted to get the expansions, but it was like, there's some weird thing between there, like my account had to be on their system, like their website or something, but not Steam. It was like, and there was like really weird things. I couldn't get the, yeah, traditionally, I have found yeah, I Steam know. does not handle MMOs very well. Yeah. Uh, because I've seen these issues happen with every single MMO that you can purchase through Steam. Like Elder Scrolls, uh, Neverwinter, it was happening with Neverwinter, uh, Wakfu, mm-hmm. uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because because companies have their own launcher that they want you to do stuff yes. through. Yeah, but you, it was some but, weird stuff yeah. with that. It was giving me problems. Yep. Um, let's see. Any other? Oh, Saints Row Four is currently out. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, won't talk too much about that one. <laughs> is like it? weird GTA. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll call it weird because we want to still try and keep this a little little PG. Yeah. Um, yeah, weird. That's that's Trials that's of Mana, definitely... April twenty fourth. So mm-hmm. that is the remake version. Um, yeah, I'm actually kind of down with that. I'm yeah, probably gonna get that when it comes out. Um, let's see. Um, uh, EA is bringing Burnout Paradise remastered. Oh, okay, you're you're in the shop right now. No, I'm on I Nintendo's mean... website. That's a pretty same a pretty popular racing game, so I guess yeah. I'm not too surprised. Oh yeah, that. or was a very popular racing game when it came out. It's still pretty popular. 
At least a year ago it was. Um, and uh, Panzer Dragoon Remake is also out. Uh, that one. So when they showed it at E3. Star, Star Fox on Dragons. Yeah. When they showed it at E3, it must have been like a, it must have been like an early build. Because it looked really rough. And when they showed it in the in the direct, it looked so much better. And I was like, wow. Uh, yeah, they, they must have shown an early build of it. Uh, it's an everybody was rails shooter. So yeah. basically you ride this dragon and the drag it's, it's like, it's like Star Fox on a dragon. Yeah. So instead of the R wing, you're on a dragon that shoots fire balls and stuff. Yep. And it's a medieval ish setting as opposed to space Ooh. game came out. I think that might've been a PS2 game originally. Maybe. Yeah. I feel like it. Maybe I want to say it was like Sega it. though. Maybe it was a Dreamcast game? I think it was a Dreamcast one. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Blah, blah, blah. Panzer Dragoon, 1995 was the first Whoa. one. Sega Saturn! Wow. It was a Sega Saturn Sega game. Saturn. I was reading some article today about Sega used to have this guy do commercials for them i forget but whatever and uh basically would just beat kids up for not buying sega and the commercials <laughs> <laughs> yeah like do karate to them and judo to them uh but now like apparently this guy the actual real guy's son is now the new sega spokesperson oh nice <laughs> but it's more of like uh i don't know he's like a high school anime character more than like a like old beat old guy beating you up nice he just like walks around the high school and is like sega ah. he's got like <laughs> anime sparkles and stuff oh wow um, okay yeah oh here's here's a weird fun fact about panzer dragoon uh so in 1997 it was ported to windows in japan only oh. what yes Oh, it's so great. It's so interesting because Japan not really known for PC gaming. No, uh, they're very heavily uh, in the consoles. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So a whole bunch of whole bunch of interesting stuff coming out. Um, oh, and then uh, Ring Fit Adventure um, got a rhythm mode. So it's basically just oh. dance for for uh, Ring Fit Adventure. Um, but hey, Nintendo works, being man. but Nintendo being Nintendo, um, it's uh it's no like popular music and it's all like Nintendo music. So sort of like yeah. how they did uh the DDR Mario mix back in the day and how like they didn't have any popular songs. Um, Whatever yeah. works, man. Um, but it's also they pick stuff from like Breath of the Wild. Known for its thrilling score, uh, I, I thought that was an odd choice. Of like, out of all the Zelda games that they could pick from yeah. to do music, they they picked the one where like it almost it's has like no music. Weird alternative jazz when you fight. <laughs> yes. Monsters. Yeah. It's very weird. Um, I mean, there's like. There's basically uh, Cass's theme, and that's like the only like consistent theme that appears throughout the game. The rest of the stuff is yeah. like very amp. It's either very ambient, or yeah, it's like weird jazz. Yeah, I don't um, know how to describe it. Yeah, uh, a lot of stuff from Splatoon Two, which I guess in Japan could be qualified as popular music, but <laughs> um, but yeah, not not so much here. So just get just get just dance. It's a fun game. There you go. Yeah. Uh, also available on the Switch. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was actually considering buying it because I'm starting to uh, next week. I'm going to start bringing my Switch into work for the residents. Um, because because we need something to do. We're all just going up the walls. Um, <laughs> we need something. Are the to walls do. okay? For now. And I'm I'm bringing in the switch in hopes that it will keep them okay until we can resume our normal activities. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then last up on the news, uh, this was, um, so, uh, a former Warcraft guildmate of mine shared this with me on Facebook. Um, so right now on Humble Bundle is they have, it's basically, uh, uh, file, like 3D printer files for, uh, layer Dungeons and Dragons layer terrain. So it's basically to print That's out like cool. minis and <clears throat> like, um, mm -hmm. sort of the, like the layer builder sets that you could get from like Dwarven Forge and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. A bunch of people have made 3D printer files for them. Um, nice. So, uh, yeah, That's Humble really Bundle's cool. always pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. They've got, it's it's a pretty good deal. Uh, you do need to have access to a 3D printer. I can't stress that enough. So, uh, unfortunately, not really of any use for me. Um, Point of order, once all of this everything is done with um the pittsfield anthonyum does have a 3d printer okay do you, do you so have to pay to use it you i'm just sure you do membership? but that is something that could be discussed mm. sure uh <laughs> however <clears throat> i wonder depending on the cost for that like if it then becomes cost effective to actually end up doing this yeah. as opposed to buying pre-made stuff or doing what I do and using paper craft. Yeah. Uh, I'd imagine paper craft being infinitely cheaper. I bought a lot of miniatures last week when I was sitting home <laughs> doing nothing because there was a sale on miniature uh, market. Oh uh, boy. <laughs> nice. So that order should be coming in. I spent all more money than I'm willing to admit uh, on this podcast. <laughs> um, Hey, like, just like we don't ask how much Courtney spends on dice. <laughs> and actually, uh, may not have bought more. here, I do want to, I do want to give a shout out. Um, so since we're on the topic of like minis and stuff, just a couple, uh, different. So because I've been doing paper craft stuff, um, just a shout out to a couple different paper craft creators. Uh, yeah. if you're, if you're looking for that, um, I highly recommend, um, so printable heroes is one. Um, <clears throat> they do a Patreon. They also sell stuff on drive through RPG, um, as well as trash mob minis. Um, they, uh, have like a more cartoony style. Um, but I've used, uh, their stuff in the past and it's quite good. Um, as well as there's this new one that I found, uh, P mal or P mall. Um, where, uh, so this one, rather than being like, the little figures that like <clears throat> you basically print it out, you fold it in half and like glue it together and then it like stands up on its own, but it's flat. These are like, uh, things that you assemble. So, uh, like Josh in your game, how you, how you made that, like, uh, I can't remember if you made like the village one time out of all the paper craft <laughs> buildings and stuff. Yeah. So like I paint, I, I printed a bunch of like, build it yourself foldable yeah. buildings because I wanted like a little alleyway scene area for a specific encounter. And yeah, I mean, you just print it out. I printed it out on like a uh, uh, cardstock paper or yeah. like a thicker paper, not regular printer paper. Um, yeah. yeah. Just use glue sticks. Nothing crazy. You yep. just fold on the lines, cut where it tells you to. And it's like a little snip. It's pretty easy. Um, so yeah, a so lot that's what... of them. It's time consuming, but that's a, uh... That's what cool. this um, this person does. Um, and you can just throw that right on top of your grid. Like if you use a, yeah. a map like I do, and a lot of people do, you can just throw that right on top of your grid and it's great. It works. Yep. Um, so yeah, so that's what uh, this um, paper D&D &D, uh, Patreon does, um, is they do sort of the assemblage uh, paper craft construction type stuff. Whereas the other ones, they're just... Um, you know, you just uh, fold it once, glue it together, and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, just because I'm doing I, a lot of paper craft stuff these days. I did so. that for the longest time when, like, yeah. I didn't have access to minis or anything when I first started DMing, and I was living internationally, and, like, it was super expensive to ship, and I didn't know where to buy them. Yep. I just made them all myself. You just, I didn't use, like, people. I just went to Google Images and, like, cropped and, and cut stuff and made them. Yeah. I didn't have my own um, printer, and I had to go to this place, and they probably thought it was really weird for putting out pictures of monsters and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> every week. 
Uh, one thing to uh, note is um, Printable Heroes also has been including um, token files uh, since uh, folks are probably not playing in person these days, um, okay. but that are usable that are usable for things like Roll Twenty and um, uh, what's the other one? Um, Fantasy, Fantasy Grounds. Grounds. That one. Yeah. Fantasy Grounds. Yeah. Yep. Um, just to get back to the 3D printer, though, um, in at the Berkshire museum um or anthony um, words i just say library just it's a library don't use the fancy yes. word it's a library um the 3d printer does not cost anything at this time they are not charging for filament at this time i'm gonna say if you but if you went in and just started printing out mad miniatures someone would probably be like hey hold up hold up a minute here yeah because because these are like uh, it says you could it depends on what it is because they could say they said i looked in their faq and it's like you can be printing um yeah you can you can print art gifts etc you know um keychains sculptures the possibilities are endless so i i still feel like that if you're going to go in there and print out the possibilities there's finite possibilities i bet uh basically a like an entire Dwarven Forge set uh, right. yeah. is you should expect to pay something well, also, for the materials. You can't just think of filament. You have to think of wear and tear on the machine. Right? Oh, yeah. So was, if you're doing was, a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'm just, again, thinking of somebody like me who would totally take advantage and just go and print out a zillion things. And like, but the rules say. But that's also just according to their FAQ. I right. didn't do each like deeper. Yeah. So. Um, but it is part of the... Uh, I, I would also the... say people wait a couple of years because 3D printer prices are going way, way down. And um, yeah, um, even even also... now, there's really affordable ones, relatively speaking, we, um, we that do pretty good know... quality. We yeah. also all know somebody who has a 3D printer. Um, or knows somebody who knows somebody who has it. But that's part of the library of things um, at the library. So anybody who's listening, you know, would like any info on that. That's that's what we've got. Okay. Um, but um, I personally like Papercraft a little bit better because you guys are able to do a lot with it. Uh, according to friend of the nice. podcast, Heather, uh, the Ender 3, which I presume is a 3D printer, is going for it under is. $200 right now. Mm-hmm. So that is, I mean, that's like regular printer price. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or, or let's what what I am used to for regular printer price. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, my yeah. printer was like a hundred bucks, but it's just like very basic. Yeah. Very very yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. That said, I will probably still stick to papercraft just because uh, materials are a lot cheaper. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey man, computer printer ink ain't cheap. Uh, oh, but he can get a lot more pieces out yeah. of I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's I the other thing. I, when I made those buildings, I burned through printer ink like crazy yeah. when I was making um, those papercraft buildings. Uh, one thing that a lot of um, the papercraft artists that I uh, mentioned before was um, <clears throat> in their files. So you basically da- like download a PDF and it comes in multiple versions. Uh, oh. They also include black and white versions that you can just yep. print out the black and white version and then color it in yourself <clears throat> nice. so that you could use, you know, crayons or colored pencils or markers or whatever you want mm-hmm. um, and save on uh, ink because that's uh, really cool. Too. That's yeah, a, really nice. a pack of colored pencils, if you want to do that yourself, is certainly a lot cheaper than a cartridge of ink. Five bucks. You, you can yeah. get them at for the, the dollar. For like the, for like the, the hundred pack, hundred colors, five yeah. bucks. You can, yeah, you can get them at Dollar Tree, too. Yeah. Uh, and I think I may have mentioned it on, like, an art stream or something before, but, uh, yeah, recommendation. Um, yeah, really quick and easy. As Josh mentioned, like, cardstock, uh, glue stick will be all you need because, I mean, you're just gluing two pieces of cardstock together. Um, and then what I like to do is I also get uh, packing tape. Um, and what I do is yes. once I have uh, glued them together, I used to do that as well, yeah. <clears throat> is I'll basically get two. Um, you poor man, lemonade. Swatches, yeah, basically two swatches of like packing <laughs> tape or whatever, and then tape both sides together, <clears throat> and then cut a little, you know, border around them. Hmm. 
so that it just protects them a little bit. Yep. What I used to do uh, was I'd, I'd have my whatever, my blank, and then I'd put all the miniatures I want on it and set it up so I just had to fold them. And then what I would do is I'd print it out. And the first thing I would do was put uh, packing tape over all, like, over all the printed pieces just as a layer of protection. And then I would cut and glue and do whatever. I also used to use, a, I had a little metal, like, it's like the, you know, like a clip you would use to hold papers together. And it has that, yeah. like a thick, mm-hmm. like thick pack of papers, not like a paper yeah. clip. But yeah, yeah, a binder I clip. Would use the, I would use the part that, not the wire things, but just the bottom metal part of it. And mm-hmm. I would put the miniatures in that um, just so it had weight. But there's many ways to do that, too. You don't have to. That was extra. Yeah, I don't know what the actual piece for, is called. <clears throat> for the benefit of the audio audience, I am getting my box of minis out. Because <laughs> that's how he has some of his. But I did a, a little a little one extra on Black Friday, and we went to Michael's, and we raided Michael's, uh, yep. and bought basically little, they have wooden, like, tokens yes. in the craft section. Yep. Yep. And I got basically their little wooden uh, like circles or shapes of various sizes. And so I got them that were, they're not exact, but they were roughly the sizes yeah. of like medium size all the way up to gargantuan size creatures. And basically hot glued the base of those alligator clips Yep. to uh, the base. Alligator so clip, now, that's, what, that's what it is. Yeah. So now... I'm gonna hold this up close to the camera. So now I have reusable mini bases. Yep. Um, that is, you know, until the uh, Geek Tank Games Kickstarter comes in. Since um, part of that is they're including uh, bases for papercraft minis. Yep. Uh, um, another alternative: go to any hardware store, Home Depot, your local hardware store, whatever, even Walmart, whatever you got. And uh, just get washers. They have inch, one inch diameter yep. washers. They have whatever size washer you want. If you need bigger washers yep. for a bigger size creature, but if you want a little more weight and stability on your base, that was another tip uh, I had, I had learned way back in the day. Yeah. But same thing is those wooden tokens are really nice too. They're probably yeah. cheaper, and they mm-hmm. for paper minis they give you what you need honestly for what you're yep. doing. Um, you can paint them different colors if you want to differentiate. Like if you have, if you wanted to do a group of uh, PCs and you want to differentiate colors to help them identify their piece on the map, because uh, sometimes yep. it's hard to do that with paper minis. I've found, um, but yeah, you can put yep. by felt, like stick on felt, and you know, cut that mm-hmm. and stick it on. There's lots of things you can do. Yeah, um, all different levels of pricing and ease and whatever your craftiness you know, an artistic ability is it's, yeah, you can do it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have any money and you can't do anything buy paper and you can draw stick figures, or you can just put a letter and yep. cut out squares and circles. And you know, there's, you can do every level. And if you don't want to use miniatures, don't use miniatures. You don't have to. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. You know, uh, as, as folks know on tales of Dramora, uh, we don't, um, because we don't, we don't have a table in the middle of, we the, don't the group. have a table. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, we, we're, we're broken up into three separate tables. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, so, yeah, that kind of wraps up the uh, general news for this week. So why don't we talk about what's going on in 8-Bit Adventures? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, basically tonight marks the start of a four day stream extravaganza. Uh Nice, nice, so, uh, very nice. Uh, this week we've got uh, eight bit adventures plays, so uh, more Animal Crossing. Um, lots, lots of exciting things happening in the town. A lot of infrastructure being built. Um, I have caught more fish, uh, <laughs> including marlins and uh, tuna. So some of the big rare pier fish. Um, still hoping to uh, catch sharks. Um, I don't think they are available this time of year, um, but the hope is uh, to keep going to those deserted islands and see if I can catch one that's in the southern hemisphere. Um, so uh, I also, um, it's uh, the the bunny day event, so there will be a lot of like Easter egg hunt type stuff. Um, going around just like collecting eggs from all sorts of various uh, locations. Um 
And then uh, Friday, Tales of Jamora, The Kraken's Wake, finally returns. Um, yeah! <laughs> complete with an actual opening sequence for the what? show. Um, what? So, uh, not technically animated, uh, as it's just, you know, still images uh, slowly panning across the screen. Um, but they are all relevant images to the characters. Uh, nice. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, and I have it set up so that way, uh, we will be able to actually, like, stream the opening as part of the broadcast. So, um, yeah, so that, that's very exciting. Um, nice. so, uh, as I've said before, because, uh, the studio is not open, uh, to the public right now, um, we will be, uh, sort of playing online. So just, uh... Have have some level of expectations in case uh, something goes wrong, but um, <laughs> I did testing with almost everyone and it all worked. So um, we also just please uh, in in advance uh, be patient with audio quality um, because some folks have uh, different levels of quality than others. Um, those of us that are on the podcast now have kind of better audio quality, uh, whereas uh, those that don't. Um, you know, uh, th- there may be chaos. Let's put it that way. So, <laughs> um, and then Saturday, uh, because it's the first Saturday of the month, return of Super Saturday, and I will be playing Chrono Trigger again. Um, I think, let's see, I am at the point where I am uh, going to the, the Sky City, uh, which I think is probably where the story starts to really pick up, I guess. Uh, I've gotten the time traveling spaceship. Spoilers. Uh, so now I can jump to whatever time I want from whatever time I want. Uh, I feel like that's not much of a spoiler. I feel like that was in like magazine advertising. It's also in the opening sequence of the game. Yeah. Like, uh, so yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. And I have a feeling pretty soon I'll be picking up the final member of the party. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Do you know who it is already? I I I know that it's uh, uh, we'll say Janice. Uh, but but Magus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you knew that or not. Yeah. No. I yeah. I didn't know if you knew that spoiler. Yep. Yeah. Also, also in the opening sequence. (laughs) Is it? Well, they they hint at it by showing him like pretty prominently. Uh. Well, I think I like you could just assume he's the big bad, right? If they, I mean, that's also true. But yeah, yeah. Early yeah. in the game, they make it him up to be kind of like, yeah, this is the final boss. Yep. And then you find but out, then, oh no, actually, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go full JRPG on you here. Yep. Uh, we fight not God, but kind of God. Uh, space asteroid monster God. Yeah. Uh, Basically. uh, it's, it's Ragnaros from space. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. By fire be purged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> blessed be rag. Yes. Fire kills all <laughs> sins. So. Uh, yeah. so yeah. Um, no, the party of final fantasy 10 kills sin. <laughs> Waka. Yes, Waka, the true Waka hero. Kilson. Uh, the pretty racist, religious zealot Waka. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Until the end. Um, he, he fixes himself. He confronts the reality of his beliefs. And then, uh, um, <clears throat> so basically this week, instead of in lieu of a regular comic, um, because of Animal Crossing and Chrono Trigger, uh, and particularly last Saturday's stream, where I caught a number of tarantulas, and determined that the best way to catch tarantulas is to just charge them. Uh, everybody's like coming up with convoluted plans and like digging tunnels, <clears throat> like God. digging holes to create like pathways so that tarantulas like have to run at you or whatever and you can prepare for or whatever. And it's like, no, nah, I'm just going to run at it. Um, no, yeah. one of my Oakham's friends razor. actually went to, a church, went to like a spider island. Solution. And and she, they got, they got so many tarantulas yes so spider island is real uh yeah 
I thought you were joking, and then I saw oh, no. No. all of the spiders, all of the tarantulas that they had got, and I was like, whoa. Okay, yeah, yeah no, they are totally on Spider Island. Yes, no, I am, I am, like, like Chrono and Frog in the opening sequence of Chrono Trigger, I am undergoing deep swordsman training to take on Spider Island. Uh, okay. But I thought, and because I've been playing Chrono Trigger, I thought it would be funny to uh, do an homage uh, to uh, Toriyama's artwork of the Chrono Trigger cover art. Very uh, classic cover, yeah. But uh, doing it as uh, going after a tarantula <laughs> instead. Yes! So The only thing you needed to do was, you know how it's got the fire going to the sword, but yeah. you're the net. <clears throat> you need to have, uh, who's mm-hmm. that dog girl in uh, Animal Crossing? Oh, Isabel. Yeah. Isabel. Is- Isabel, Isabel should it. be yeah. shooting the spell because it's Marl. Uh, I, well, I I thought about it and, and I was trying to figure out like uh, what would be. Oh, and then you could have had Tom Nook in like the crouch pose that Frog's in. Yeah. I was trying to think of, I was trying to think of who like I would put in those poses and everything. And I was like, I mean, if, because chances are all those moments happen on deserted islands mm. and it was, there, there are no friends on deserted islands. There is no party. Yeah. The only guys that the the um is uh, Orville, who uh, hangs in the back. He's the dodo that flies you out to the island. He just hangs out on the dock. Uh, so it's like, eh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I did consider uh, uh, adding um, stand-ins for Marl and Frog uh, in that, but uh, I I think it it speaks for itself. Uh, I knew it. I, yeah, I, I mean, I knew what it was as soon as you. Did it? Yeah. It's funny because um I don't have the box for. I have two copies of Chrono Trigger, so I have a Super Famicom version that I bought mm-hmm. while I was in Japan. And it's full box, it's full complete, and the cover Ooh. on that is different. Yeah. It's super cheap, dude. You can buy su- fully complete Super Nintendo games for like ten dollars in Japan. It's super crazy <sighs> cheap. It's yeah. That's you, I have Jap- every Final Fantasy in Japan full complete. Like yeah, that's what I was buying when I was did my vacation there. But yeah, and I bought like a bunch of Super Nintendo box games because they're so cheap because obviously they had a lot of them over there. Yeah. Over here to find a fully boxed, like complete Chrono Trigger, you're probably looking several hundred digits. dollars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Triple digits. I know the cart itself, when I bought it, it was like 80, I think, when I bought just the cart alone. But yeah. point being, it's funny. I knew what it was right when I saw it, but it's, I, the Japanese box art is different, but, um, and it's like, that's the the Japanese art is kind of the one that's implanted in my head right now. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's definitely Chrono Trigger. What, why is it so familiar? And then I looked up like, oh, yeah, that's the, that's the Western box, box art. That's right. Yeah. And it was, it was nice to, um, so most of that I did as a, as a, just a trace. <clears throat> um, and it was nice to kind of get a feel for somebody else's art style, especially very mm. famous. Uh, yeah we'll say illustrator slash cartoonists art style. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I mean, um, he, was, he started out as a manga guy, right? So that's what yeah. DBZ was originally or Dragon yeah. Ball was originally. Um, so uh, comics should resume next week. Um, my hope is, is I, I would love to finish up this story arc at a, at a good point. Um, and then focus more on kind of doing, you know, one-off comics featuring mm-hmm. the cast. Because um, that's kind of what I uh, wanted 8-Bit Adventures to be more of. Uh, and then end up getting these ideas of these overarching plots. And I'm like, oh no, I started the story and now I have to finish it. <laughs> hmm. I started this thing and now I have to finish it. Uh, <sighs> so yeah. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to also share... Um, so for those that aren't aware, uh, Tales of Jamora does have its own website, um, jamora.com. So J E M M O R A.com. Uh, it kind of serves as like a, a place for all the lore and sort of campaign setting information for Tales of Jamora. Um, but recently I published an article on dark vision because I know yeah. a lot of folks in D and D, uh, kind of harp on dark vision in fifth edition being way too prevalent. Um, and uh, I think a lot of folks also forget that, like, um, technically, if you're seeing in the darkness with dark vision, uh, black and white, 
you're supposed to have disadvantage on perception checks because it's treated as dim light. Um, so uh, I think that gets overlooked and that's why it becomes kind of problematic of just like it uh, negates a lot of uh, a lot of challenges, we'll say. Um, so I wanted to throw out some uh, sort of interesting alternatives um, that are a little more natural than just like, I can magically see in the dark. Um, yeah. So they include, uh, and these are all, with the exception of one, using mechanics that are already present in 5th edition. <clears throat> so uh, the easiest one to add was low light vision, which was pre uh, present in both 3rd and 4th edition, um, where it's basically you treat dim, like you don't suffer any penalties for dim light, um, but you still, like, you can't see in darkness. Um, yeah. So, like, this was a feature of, like, a lot of elves, gnomes um, would get this. Uh, and so uh, that's easy enough to add. Um, and uh, it doesn't actually change a whole lot of stuff. Uh, um, you know, it just uh, kind of nerfs um, those races a little bit. Uh, but it could be argued that elves are pretty powerful as it is. Um, so... Uh, so low light vision is one option. Um, another option is uh, tremor sense. Now I feel like tremor sense is something that doesn't happen an awful lot. Uh, tremor sense is you essentially have blind sight with respect to other creatures that are in contact with the ground. Yeah. Uh, within range. That could be that could be kind of like how spiders. If you like come across like giant spiders, you can and you touch their webs. Yeah. Like. They they know, man. You're there. You're found. They know. Yeah, that is, uh, in fact, how um, that ability works. Actually, that's how how uh, how it works in the movie Tremors. Yes, with Kevin Bacon. Yes, which is maybe the best movie of all time. It's up there with <laughs> Top Gun uh, and top top three movies for sure of all time. Uh, better than where Godfather. Does, better than Godfather Part Two. Where does Tremors Four rank, though? <laughs> oh no, those ones don't. Count. We're talking original. Yeah. OG. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, uh, with the orange gack. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, if you're looking for something to do in this quarantine, watch Tremors immediately after this. You will you can thank me when you see me after all this is over. Um, if you get a flaming pile of poo on your uh, front doorstep uh, <laughs> after I watch it... <laughs> Have you never seen Tremors? No, I haven't. Oh my god! Oh, you gotta watch it, Courtney. It's good. Watch it. It's it. It's fun. It is. I don't fun. know if it, I don't know if it's good, but it's fun. It is. It is good. I've already I've already started medicating for tonight. So does it, does, sure. Does it also? It doesn't have Burt Reynolds, does it? No. Uh, Reba McIntyre's in it. I always think it's uh, basically the guy that has all the guns. I keep thinking he's Burt Reynolds. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. But th that shows how long it's been since I've seen the movie. Here's but, a um... basic synopsis. Sorry, but this is important. Uh, <laughs> small desert town. Normal. Uh, all of a sudden, sandworms attack. Giant sandworms that can detect your movements from the tremors you make when you walk and sounds or whatever uh, start killing people. And Kevin Bacon has to save the town. And it's great. Yep. Apparently, Tremors is on Netflix right now. There you go. There um, we go. So I think that that's going to have to happen. Top two uh, movies of all time between that and Top Gun. It sits up there. You can uh, you can watch that after you finish uh, season three of Castlevania. <laughs> okay. Personally, I'd say watch Tremors considering, first. Considering, okay, guys, you know how much I love binging. Um. Because we need we need to get to to, to this week in eight bit adventures. Because I've watched. Some... That's what we're doing. Before I interrupted all of this with my tremors. I mean, nonsense. I mean, I mean, she means quest log. log in general. Yeah, uh, I mean quest log. But anyway, so uh, so tremor sense, give it to dwarves. Yeah. Uh, and other sort of burrowing underground creatures. Um, and then for the last one is echolocation, which I think is woefully underused. Uh, in Dungeons and Dragons. Which is basically blind sight, but it doesn't work in areas of magical silence, vacuums, or if uh, you're deafened. Um, so uh, I thought an interesting thing might be uh, drow. You know, if you give yeah. uh, echolocation to drow. Uh, and that way it, it kind of gives a little more explanation to like, uh, 
they don't necessarily uh, see in the dark, uh, but they have other methods of navigating around in pitch darkness. They're all daredevil. They are all, in fact, daredevil. Yes. Uh, except they, they can see when they go above ground, but it is uh, very painful and very bright for them. And say, so they don't like being above ground. No. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's just a quick article on that. Um, and then you can find other information about Tales of Jamora there. So, uh, that wraps up this week in 8-Bit Adventures. So now, <laughs> by, by Courtney's request, on to quest yes. log. <laughs> All right, Courtney, why don't we start with you? Yeah, because I, I I tried to watch Tiger King, guys. I have I have watched bad things for you in the past. Um I'm I, I'm, I had I, to ask Megan what all these memes were going like who who Yes. What is it, Carol Bascom? Yes. I've not watched I, it. I just I had really to, like the way everything looks. I, I, like I had to ask visually. Who it, that person it, was because I kept seeing memes and I was having a moment where I was like, I don't, I don't understand. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. All of these wonderful memes is also what made me want to try, try and watch it. Um, I, I, I it's such a hodgepodge of every, I couldn't get through the first episode guys. And I've sat through some terrible stuff. <laughs> Courtney sat through the Death Note movie. I did. For you, listeners. <laughs> I think this is probably, you're saying this is terrible, probably in a different context, in a different in type of way, right? a very different context. I couldn't. Whereas the Death Note movie is I... just bad storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably um... just bad because it's so bonkers, bananas all over the place. Um. Yeah. It's It's because... Joe Exotic, I swear, I think that he's the one who produced this thing, because that's the only way that somebody had to have been on some sort of mind-altering drugs to think that this editing any, uh, made any I'm sense. I'm pretty sure there was a lot of meth involved. <laughs> yes, but I'm talking about the specifically, I'm talking about the people who cut this thing together. Um, I stand by my statement. <laughs> yeah. They had to have been on some sort of mind-altering drugs to think that this made sense, because I couldn't follow it. I didn't understand. Like I understood like the story that they were trying to tell. Yes, this is the setup of who these people are and why it's important. And I'm like, that could have only taken 15 minutes, and there's still 45 to go. They're why it's world you... building. They're building up a world and characters, so that as you progress forward, you have an emotional attachment. No, now mind you, no. folks. Uh, Courtney, uh, is saying this and, and sat through and understood the entirety of the Warcraft movie. Yeah. No, no enjoyed it even. <laughs> which, which was the, the general public's complaint about the Warcraft movie. Yeah. I could, I could actually follow that. Yeah. I had a couple questions like, why isn't he, where are his, where are his boots? Um, but that was shortly answered. Um, <laughs> But yeah, guys, it's just, just, okay, how do I put this nicely? Um, Don't put it nicely. Just be honest. No, 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 no. I don't like putting explicit tags on the podcast. Um, If you are of an age in which one can legally consume um, mind-altering substances, that is the best way that I suggest to watch this. Um legally and safely consume um that is how i suggest you will if you if you are still interested in the dumpster fire that is tiger king just just A- obligatory know. disclaimer that 8-bit adventures that the, the views yeah, represented by court and 8-bit adventures do not necessarily represent the views of 8-bit adventures no no this is totally my review 100 <laughs> percent um I think it's a yeah. dumpster fire on purpose. That's the it yeah. It is, but it's not yes. a dumpster fire that I can't look away from. There's so much going on. I've, I've in only it. ever I've only heard the opposite. Actually, I've heard There's everybody so much... who's ever said anything is like I can't not look away from. This. I, I 
I think this just goes to show that we found Courtney's threshold for that. Yeah. Of like, of like, it's, it's at that threshold where it's, it's bad enough that Courtney is able to break it, break free of its hold and, and look away. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but I did just the opposite with that. Um, when, when I was playing games this week, cause I've been playing a bunch of different games. Um, after trying to cleanse my mind of Tiger King. <sighs> so what did you um, play, Courtney? So, um, I played kind of per usual is my Stardew. Mm-hmm. Um, I have less than 10 of the dinosaurs to kill now mm-hmm. um, for monster eradication goals. Um, I played some Pokemon Shield. I uh, got my final... It's been a couple months since I played... Um, but got my final gym badge and, uh, started the challenge, um, in the post game. So you are, you are rapidly approaching end game. Yes. Yes. Where Um, everything goes off the rails. I am totally expecting it to, and I am looking forward to it. Um, but while I was playing that, I had a friend suggest to me, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team uh, because there's a demo available for it on Switch um, and you can pick up the entire game for the usual 60 bucks I couldn't get past the demo I didn't, it was we were talking about this a little bit pre-stream um, The f- I think, to be very honest, knowing now I may re-download the demo um, and use the, well, what would be the D-pad on my controller. Um, oh yeah. I think for any game that's either a remake of a classic game or, yeah. or playing a classic game. Um, like when I play, uh, Chrono Trigger on Steam, uh, yeah. I have to use the D-pad. I can't use the, I can't use an analog stick. Yeah. Cause using the analog stick, um, <clears throat> I was, and this is the tough part is my main frustration, but the reason why I couldn't see myself enjoying the game was because I was using the analog stick and my movement was what you would expect for movement to be on an analog stick when it was designed for a D-pad. Um, so it wasn't as precise as I wanted it, expected it to be. Um, and sometimes like I'd end up overshooting where I was or wanted to be. Um, things like that. I genuinely enjoyed it, though. Um, it's just, it's cute. I, I chose to be, uh, a little Cubone. And you get to pick somebody to be, like, your buddy in it. And I picked a Psyduck, and I named it after my cousin Tabby. Um, because she loves platypus. So, why not? Um, and we just went around rescuing and and doing cute little missions and it was really cute and i think nice. i might actually re-download it um just that was the one thing that i was like okay if i have to keep playing this the moving around is gonna make me frustrated yeah um but yeah and then i started playing a game at work that I had we've talked about before. Um, it's uh, Will a Wonderful World. I am in love with it. I'm about a third to half the way done. Um, it's awesome. So it is a uh, it's a storytelling. It's like one of those novel um, visual novel that yes. Uh, mixed with puzzles. Um, and so you play in Will a Wonderful World, you play as a god. And they get letters from this cast of characters. Um, and in those letters, you can actually alter the letters and what they say to change the outcome of whatever event happened. Um and sometimes it's it's I've I've put like four and a half four four and a half hours onto it already, because mm-hmm. um, <laughs> you want to know the more of the story. You want to know 
because you don't just follow each person like individually you have to like wait for their letters to come in and i was waiting for two straight hours of playtime almost to get another letter from one of the characters um and so i'm really enjoying it it is a lot more mature than i thought it was going to be um well what's it rated uh that's the thing i didn't even look when i bought it because i don't pay attention um but i'm i'm 90 percent sure it's right it has to be rated um but i don't think i looked at what it was for because like i i totally expect like language 100 percent um there is some absolute levels of GTA, like style madness, um, with what is done and what's going on. Um, one thing. Is this game I... called Will I Am? No. Uh, Will a Wonderful World. Let's put it this way: um, when viewing it on the Nintendo website, it asks for age verification, so that means it's rated M. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so there's there's um. A bunch of the different characters are connected in different ways, um, but you have to, again, you have to go through the story and read them out to know what is fully going on. It's not one of these games that you just, oh, I'm just going to click through. Okay, no, you actually have to pay attention. <laughs> um, and I'm really, really enjoying, I really like the stories that are being told. Um, I think one of small joke that's pretty um, in there was one of the characters um, is a, is a young woman as as a young student, you know, high school student, of course. Um, and in one of the the chapters or letters, she's followed down a um, alleyway by a stranger, and. I laugh at this because her reaction is, oh no, he's going to reach out behind his back and pull out a chainsaw and hack me in spaces. And I'm like, that's, that's your go-to? That, that's your go, oh, that's, that's precious. Um, but not because, because that's her generic, like, that's her go-to, is people are going to hack her to pieces with a chainsaw. As okay any wonderful hacker slasher like thing not i'm going to be beat up not i'm going to be abused it's it goes all the way to that that almost uh, it's 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 that wonderful dark humor um that i actually enjoy huh. um but it actually it really does a job so far of what i've seen of discussing some very 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 touchy subjects um and it gives some i guess background as to oh how did this person become a gangbanger oh this is what happened like i have a feeling like at the end of this i'm gonna think back on who the characters were when i first like was introduced to them and now like at the very end and i'm gonna be like whoa that did not go where i expected yeah um because nothing has gone where i've expected it to yeah um which is another thing that i really like about this game um but yeah okay. that's that's what i've been playing <laughs> cool and doing or not finding myself able to do <laughs> yeah so what about you guys? What have you guys been doing? Why don't you go ahead, Josh? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I didn't know uh, you left it too open. Um, so uh, I'm continuing, been streaming Final Fantasy X. Um, I've been also playing it off stream because I was going to... I'm at a dilemma. I don't know if I want to do all the end game, like super bosses and stuff because grinding to get to the point of power i need to do that is so boring <laughs> it's uh just doing a lot of like the same fights over again and like grinding certain items i need to make my characters a certain level of power to 
fight these bosses that don't even provide any other reward other than saying, hey, look, I did it. Yeah. Which for me generally isn't that great. I was only going to do it because I didn't do it way back in the day. At this point, I think I'm just going to finish the story because yeah. that's honestly why I started playing it again. I'm, I'm more interested in that anyway, and I can move on and do something else before Final Fantasy VII comes out next week. Um, so that being said, I'll probably finish. I'm right at the end, so I'm going to probably beat that game tomorrow evening. Mm -hmm. um, nice. I've also been playing Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, which is a remake they did of the original Metal Gear Solid, uh, which was a PS1 game. They did this on GameCube just enhanced graphics and stuff um i don't know i just wanted to play metal gear because that game makes me really happy um mm, if you watch me gear. on my stream while i'm playing it i have a big <laughs> smile i have a big smile on my face the whole time i play just because every two minutes there's something absolutely ridiculous happening uh yep. either being said or just happening on either i'm fighting a guy in a tank like who's like weird shaman with tattoos and he's like flexing out of the tank hole <laughs> and saying weird things to me uh or <laughs> there's some dumb like pseudo philosophical bullcrap in the conversations i'm having with the woman i called to save my game uh so <laughs> i don't know if anybody's if you're familiar with Mel Gear solid it's a uh, stealth uh, espionage game, I guess. Stealth action, I guess, is a good way to put it. Where you're mostly sneaking around, and it's a mil your military game, and uh, you're just trying to sneak around and do stuff. And there's usually some type of nuclear armed mech, which is called a Metal Gear, or a, you know, whatever. But uh, you take the role of Solid Snake in this one, and you're sneaking around this nuclear waste facility where they're storing like old nuclear warheads or something. It doesn't completely, I don't know, it's just a setting as far as I'm concerned and shenanigans happen. And there's like, the thing I love about the game is it's so incredibly campy and uh, mm -hmm. jumps the shark nonstop. But at the same mm -hmm. time, it takes, it wants to take itself super seriously. Uh, and it's just a weird juxtaposition between the two tones. It's, it, it shares mm -hmm. with each other, which is really fun for me. Uh, I get the, like I said, the pseudo philosophical BS that I like in video games. It's just fun. And like, Oh, they're trying to, they're trying to say a message or like put a forth a message or a lesson here. But then you're fighting a cybernetic ninja. <laughs> that <laughs> goes invisible and fights you with a sword. It's like in your hand, it's ridiculous. Uh, so I'm having a lot of fun playing that. I'm actually emulating it because I wanted to play it with like uh, in full HD um mm -hmm. and just up res it from even the gamecube and it actually looks really nice mm -hmm. um so it's a lot of fun and it gets it's another game i haven't really played all like i don't think i ever beat it actually when i was younger and i haven't played it in a long long time so it's just one i wanted to go back and redo it's a game i quote all the time i have a great yeah. terrible snake impression <laughs> that i love to do oh yeah and the other fun thing is like it's all snake he's, his 90 percent of his dialogue is just saying back <laughs> what was just said to him in a questioning tone so someone will be like oh uh you have to go and you have to be stealth as you move through this facility and i'll be like huh stealth it's like <laughs> <laughs> haven't you been yep. in like a clandestine super agent for years and years is this new information to yep. you <laughs> so like that's why i say with like the campiness and it's like there's crazy it's like the most off the wall action 90s like 90s action movie you'll ever see in video game <laughs> form uh because kojima wanted to originally make movies when he was younger but moved into video games and this was his like metal gear is basically his crazy film franchise more or less just he did it in video games so it's a lot of fun i'm having fun playing that and i'm playing um a little bit of marvel ultimate alliance on the side just because that's a Again, like I said last week, mindless beat 'em up. I don't have to think very hard. It's just yeah. I'm Wolverine and I'm killing tons and tons <laughs> of enemies most of the time. And it's yeah. like fun and I say, Hey Bub, and like I slash things with my claws and it's great. Yeah. Uh so it's a lot of fun. And then uh it's I'm just filling time until next Friday. And uh well, it's because once Final Fantasy VII comes out, it's uh, all on board on that hype train. <laughs> Australia got it a week early. What? Yep. Because of no shipping way. things, they shipped to uh, Europe and Australia early, and Australia's source <gasps> are apparently selling it early. Oh, Whoa. They're in trouble. I don't know. Uh, I don't know I don't if know. they had a deal that like they said, yeah, you could do this. Maybe it was know. told 
yeah, who knows? Like they did, like maybe they shipped it early, not knowing how long it would take to get there, and they just said, "When you get it, you can do it." Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it, like it's Australia for us. What What are they really gonna do? They changed McDonald's signs to say Maccas. They They're gonna do what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, that. uh, th- their internet's bad enough. Uh, I, I feel like we can throw them a bone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they also ship to Europe early, too. I don't know if Europeans are getting it early. I haven't heard that yet, but I definitely heard Australians are getting it a week early. Europe has uh, no excuses. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it also does not look like that's in the cards for the U.S. On uh, Yeah. And there's, it's still up in the air whether physical copies will be out on time here or not. I've, yeah. I've gotten a couple emails from Square, and n- none of them are very specific. They're just like, we're still working on shipping. And it doesn't say, like, it doesn't give a definitive. <laughs> oh, no. It's like, we're oh. still working on making sure that you get your copy and not saying whether it'll be on time or not. Yeah. Um, oh. Also, apparently the game is 100 gigs. Uh, Oof. Yeah. Oof. So I'm going to I'm gonna have to clear some space on my <laughs> PS4, which is fine. Because I have, like, whatever. I have, like, five cur- copies of different Street Fighters taking up space and whatever games have already beat whatever i'm not gonna go back and play a lot of them so what no big yeah. deal i mean you'll have room for that in red dead maybe <laughs> maybe. maybe i actually don't know Do how much i don't know even know how big the. i have a regular ps4 i don't have a pro so i don't know how much space is even on it honestly 500 gigs so i should be fine yeah that's on a you know, regular what, i don't i don't know why like old first like an old first gen ps4 when they first came out oh, okay I don't know why uh, it's people focus on uh, like Nintendo's consoles typically having such low storage compared to the other ones when basically like, even the, the amount of games that you can typically save to a given console seems to be pretty constant. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, on the like the main, the big consoles, you can get an SSD and hook it up or even you know, whatever you can get an external hard drive and and yeah you know save stuff uh, a couple other games i've been looking I have at 128 gig sd card in my <clears throat> switch so a uh, game that came out last year but it's on steam now it's called operencia the stolen sun it's uh it's this dungeon crawler game that i just have seen and kind of been curious okay. about and now it's out on steam that i might give it a shot it's only like yeah. 30 bucks so Okay, nice. it might be worth it for some fun, and that might fill up my time in the next week. But yeah, I thought about playing Mario and the Thousand Year Door, but I think they're remastering that for the Switch. I hear potentially. Mm-hmm. I hear a lot of things. Uh, I, I heard a bunch of stuff about like Mario Sunshine and Mario sixty four and whatever. Yeah, like I'm I'm gonna wait for actual confirmation from Nintendo yeah. on that one. But that's like a that's a Paper Mario game. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door it was on GameCube. Yes. And uh, it gets yep. a lot of praise, so I'm yep. like, oh, I may give that a shot. I can't imagine it would take me very long to get through that either. No, uh, I will say Paper Mario tends to have a very sort of simplistic battle system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I remember playing one on the N64, maybe. Yeah, yeah, long, long, long. I was young-ish when I played one a long time ago. So yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just looking for games to fill up the next week. I don't want to like. I'm not getting Persona 5 right now because it's, I don't think I have enough time to get through that before yeah. Final Fantasy. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that Final Fantasy is able to get all of your time. Well, it will, regardless. Everything is yeah. getting dropped. I know. So you'd like to get you'd like to make sure that things before then um yeah, are taken I care just, of. I would just like a clear enough conscious in mind by the time I get to it. What, you don't want 16 games, like, leaving halfway done? No, I can't do that with books either. I have to yeah. finish a book before I start a new one. Yep. Really? Um, oh. And then, uh, so yeah. I've been playing uh, Animal Crossing. Um, I finished up Witcher 3. Did that, so that's completely done. Tossed a coin. Uh, there was only uh, one quest that I failed. And I only have one quest that I haven't done. <clears throat> Although apparently I missed some of the sort of like optional path main story stuff with mm. um, with Siri. Like I didn't go bring her to the Emperor. So like I guess I missed out on that sort of arc. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But it meant that she didn't become the emperor, so that's cool by me. <clears throat> um, that's on sale for like fifteen bucks on Steam right now too. I'm considering considering I, picking it up. I picked it up when it was on sale on Steam. Uh, yeah, but again, that's for, a huge yeah. investment of time. And I don't know that I. Yep. Yes, it is. Right yeah. Uh, 179 hours. Yeah, exactly. Is what I put in it. Yeah. And uh, I, I am probably like you, where I'm very methodical in completing every side mission possible yeah i'm just that's just the way i am yeah um so yeah uh but i like i like the ending in uh in toussaint um Geralt basically retires at his uh at his vineyard uh and then your lover and your love interest shows up unannounced and basically retire together and lounge and eat grapes you picked you had tris right no i picked yennefer oh okay yeah, I was talking to somebody who had Tris. I can't remember, but I think Yen is the right choice. Yeah, uh, and from the background information that I hear from the second game, yes, Yennefer seems to be the the correct choice. Uh, <laughs> uh, just because of uh, yeah, the whole like, oh, I know. Before you lost your memory, you had feelings for this other person, but I'm gonna take yeah. advantage of the fact that you lost yeah. your memory. Yep. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I couldn't. That does not make me feel good. To be fair, uh, Geralt be and Yennefer is super hot. So uh, uh, hey, <laughs> Geralt and Yennefer became a thing because he made a wish to a genie. Yeah, no, uh, I'm not happy with that either. Uh, um, but actually, part I'm of the quest happy. in so part there is a quest. One of Yennefer's quests in Witcher Three is. You actually uh, break that spell. Okay. So by summoning gets... another djinn. <laughs> uh, to basically undo the undo the wish from the first, you know, first game, I mm -hmm. guess. Uh, so you do that, and then everything works out. And you found out, oh, it was actually real the whole time. I... But, yeah. Uh, yeah, Witcher is all about the lesser evil. I'm, I'm, uh, I, there are, there are never, there are never any good options in the Witcher. There are only bad no, options. Every no, option is a bad are, option. Oh, those are all, no, I don't like though. I don't like, although the fact that Yennefer got it taken care of. Yeah. And then, oh, there really are feelings here. I, that I can. I also, I'm not familiar with the first game or the books at all. So, uh, I don't know the exact wording of the wish. Um, in the show, they allude that it was just binding their fates together, which is very yeah. ambiguous. Um, yeah. I don't, so. I'm, I'm only going off of what I know in the show. Cause yeah. I haven't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, so that ended up, uh. Yeah, uh, I I ended up getting uh, the happiest of endings for Toussaint, which still uh, mixed mixed stuff because your buddy Regis gets run out of Toussaint by the other vampires. Uh, but uh, mm. yeah, um, and then as I said, lots more Animal Crossing, and then uh, getting sucked back into Fire Emblem Three Houses. Gonna finish up my second playthrough. Uh, <laughs> I just completed the Return to Grander Field. Where you fight the three-way battle, uh, and uh, oh, poor Dimitri. He was so in the Golden Deer route. He's written so poorly, uh, and like gameplay-wise, it's just sad because like basically, I had my tank just hold a bridge with with archers behind him, just like sniping everybody or whatever, uh teleported Byleth onto this central platform that like every it, that in the previous battle uh pre-time skip when you do that like everybody rushes to it to try and get the best mm -hmm. stuff um so the empire starts with a bunch of units on there and they're like using the a ballista to fire at everybody um mm -hmm. and like has a bunch of units stationed there so it's basically dropping Byleth on there and just letting him uh mop up with counterattacks and just destroying everybody um and then basically running out while the rest of my party goes around the back to get to uh to get to Edelgard. Uh 
Dimitri sends his forces toward the kind of toward the center at first, but like he also splits in two different directions. Uh, his forces get wiped out by the Imperial forces. So that it's just like him and Dadu because I recruited all of his other people. Uh, mm -hmm. So like Dadu is basically like running toward the center and trying to mop up the rest of the Imperial units. Whereas mm -hmm. Dimitri is running back toward all of my forces, trying to just like 1v1 everybody. And it's like, oh, buddy. I mean, that sounds like post time skip Dimitri to me. Uh, 100%. But it's yeah. just, oh, it's like, no. And it was just like, uh, it's basically at this point, Byleth uh, in my game is like that end scene of Rogue One. <laughs> when hmm. like the, the, the very end scenes so are spoilers if you haven't seen Rogue One yet, uh, but you should see it specifically for this scene is that end scene when they're on the, uh, the blockade runner and, like, it's just dark, and you see Vader's lightsaber activate. And, like, that's by Oh, yeah. It's just, like, just cleaving through enemy after enemy and everything. And it's just, like, oh, you are not going to win this fight, Dimitri. <laughs> uh, and no, he did not. Uh, just one shot. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, and then, sadly, yeah, he... Um, uh, yeah, he basically, like, gets written out in dialogue after the fact, um, which is kind of a bummer. So, um, but yeah, Edelgard, on the other hand, uh, yeah, could not attack with any of my other units because uh, it was, uh, they would have gotten one shot on the counterattack. So, that, uh, not fun. Not fun for mm -hmm. that. So I had to basically wait until my other people could get dropped in. Um, mm -hmm. So... Uh, and then, uh, other fun fact is, uh, I learned, um, for, uh, building up, like, um, where they got support ranks between, uh, characters, um, who they end up with at the end of the game is determined by who they get to A rank with first. This is important because, like, at a certain point, they can stop gaining, like, support points. Uh, and in which case, they they just move on to gaining support points with other people. So um, it'll look like close allies, uh, like, drastically shifts by the end of the game. Um, even among, like, people that, uh, like, Byleth S ranks with. Um, so it's like, I have, I have uh, some folks that I have an S rank with. That, like, have just gotten completely dropped off, uh, and Byleth's closest allies are now, like, Claude, Raphael, and Ignatz. <laughs> and it's like, well, I can't stop this, apparently, so I don't know. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, so I'm thoroughly enjoying the game, still. Uh, looking forward to finishing that up, and then um, basically seeing what sort of uh, interesting stuff I can start with on a, like, new, new game plus. Um, and then, uh, in that third playthrough, I'll tackle, um, what is it, Abyss? Or that side story? Um, mm. and do that. So. Uh, and I might even stream that one again. Do that one That's completely online one again. Yeah. I could do two. Yeah. I'm waiting on a new monitor to come in so I can improve my console hookup to stream. Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw you posting something about wire splitters the other day, but yeah, because the switch is very touchy about its sound. Uh, oh, well, no. So, so mine is, um, it's, uh, in order to use the Elgato. Yeah. Um, streaming thing. I got the same issue. I've got my Elgato too. And it's like, yeah. it's, uh, because the switch I is audio. I can either listen to my computer or I can listen to the switch right Yeah. Now. Yeah. So what I have but... to do is I have to plug my speakers. Well, here's the other thing is that neither of my monitors actually have sound output. Right. And that's what I'm waiting for. My new monitor that's coming in on Friday has a headphone jack and that will make yeah. things easier for me. Yeah. So then, yeah, I can, I can more easily like stream my switch stuff. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So that's why uh, getting the audio splitter or audio combiner or something whatever or i guess it's a splitter and taking my stereos and plugging them into both the monitor and my computer um 
Yeah. And uh, I also just uh, hooked up my HDMI splitter uh, so that now instead of having to unplug my monitor from a PC and then plug it into the Elgato, all I have to do now is push a button mm. hey, uh, in order to switch go. it over. Um, required two additional HDMI cables, but that's a, we had them sitting around. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, we went a little long. Um, but that's okay. We had a lot to talk about. Uh, and, uh, I'm sure nobody's going to complain if they have more entertainment and more, more faces to connect with. Uh, yes. so, cause that's important in this, in this, uh, trying time. Yes, um, it is. So, uh, if you would like to see more content from 8-Bit Adventures, be sure to check out 8-BitAdventures.com. Um, if you want to help support that content, you can do so through two, three methods, uh, the first is you can become a patron at patreon.com slash 8bitadventures. Uh, over there, you can get exclusive access to patrons-only content. You can get early access to regular content um, and uh, discounts on things like merch. Um, yeah. Shout out to a uh, friend of the podcast, Heather, for becoming the latest patron. Woo woo! Um, yeah! So uh, the second way is uh, there's merch. Uh, available yeah! at shop dot eight bit adventures dot com uh have uh a new tales of jamora shirt uh celebrating the backstreet sharks which is uh, uh what josh came up with for the name for the group <laughs> i basically it every day yeah. Yeah, <laughs> do no, you i i feel yes. really yeah i think that... with jacobin's uh coming shift in personality I mean, you merch has been made, so it's too late to change it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, I'm really, I'm actually pretty proud of that shirt. So I yeah. like it. Um, I like and then uh, there will also be there will also be another uh, Monty shirt coming soon. Yay! So, um, so you can find that at shop.8bitadventures.com. Um, again, patrons get a 10% off code. Um, unfortunately, uh, March has ended, so that Monty code is no longer good. Um. But uh, it'll be back next year. So, yeah. Um, and then the third way you can support is uh, either by becoming a subscriber here on Twitch, or if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, uh, you get one free Twitch Prime subscription a month. Uh, if you would consider using that Twitch Prime subscription on this channel, I would be forever grateful. Yeah. Um, so, and as a reminder, it's got to be manually renewed every month. So, yes. Um, and with that, uh, you actually get access to emotes, special emotes yeah. uh, in the chat, um, as well as an iMessage. If you have an iPhone, uh, that's a thing. Yes. So. Um, and then our opening theme is uh, one up by Professor Shy Guy. You can find his work over at Professor Shy Guy. Yeah, Professor Shy Guy dot Bandcamp dot com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find me on Twitter at 8-Bit Adventures. Courtney, where, where can folks find you? Uh, they can they can try and tweet me. I check about monthly um, at cbolin91. And Josh, uh, where can the good people on the internet find you? Uh, yes. Uh, you can find me a lot on twitch.tv backslash damnanimal. Uh, and I got a Twitter set up now. <gasps> there we go. And... It is. Uh, I don't know how Twitter works. So uh, my <laughs> handle is uh, damnanimal24 okay. on Twitter. At so damnanimal24. So there we go. Okay, yeah. there we go. All right. There you go. Uh, and, with that, and with that, uh, we are done. So as <laughs> always, have fun, everyone. Happy gaming. And enjoy your pie cake. Bye, everybody. Watch Tremors. <laughs>